placing the cotter pin on my helmet lock, and then Salty finished clamping my hose and telephone. I began testing my air control valve. It regulates the air pressure in your suit. If anything goes wrong with it, you either get squeezed on the bottom or blown to the surface, and neither way is good. Now we had our own outfit, owners Pete Hunter and Gunner McNeil, which is me. There's nice dough in diving, so long as you feel that steady tunk tunk of the air compressor topside. It's like the beat of your heart. If it stops, the money stops too, and so do you. On the bottom. I had to clear Pete's air hose and I had to do it fast.
minute down there, I thought about a lot of dames being awful disappointed. Thanks, pal. Thanks for what? That equipment costs a lot of dough. Thanks. Oh, baby! Look what's coming, Gunner! Hey, that's not bad. Gorgeous. I want to talk business with you. Where can I find you ashore? Make it the ship's lantern in an hour. I wonder what that dame's got in her mind. Who cares about our mind? Oh, baby. What are you waving at? Get me out of this outfit. Oh, slow down, Romeo. You'll be all right. I'll grab the dinghy and sort of pave the way for you with gorgeous, pal. Uh, yeah, pave it for Pete. Could be, could be. That was my buddy. Another dream had cruised by and the chase was on. I wasn't blaming him, not this time. I hadn't had a good look at the doll's face. Whoever had rigged her had done a good job. Hi, Gus. Oh, hiya, Gunner. What did you have? Nothing right now. You seen Pete? Yeah, he's over there. Gorgeous, meet my sidekick, Gunnar McNeil. Her name's Sandra Radford, but her friends call her Suntan. <laughs> she usually wears a coat of tan. Well, I could still add one and one together. What do we eat? Steaks. Thick, juicy ones. Snake mine rare. Same. Medium well. Very good. Okay, Suntan. What do you want to see us about? Hey, Cutter, take it easy. Don't go giving her the rush act. She's different. Dinner's on her. Cigarette? Light? Well, you've got all the equipment. Maybe it's my Navy training. Oh, Yeoman? Sorry, Lieutenant J.T. Well, gold braid. You like? I don't believe it. Imagine me, Pete Hunter, wanting to get my arms around some gold braid. Mm, belay there, sailor. I suppose you'd like to know what this is all about. Mr. Sullivan sent me up here. He manages the inn on Barracuda Point. There's a wreck he wants blown up. Why? Oh, Tony, uh, that is, Mr. Sullivan says it's a menace to navigation. Okay, so he wants a wreck blown up. Why did he pick on us? Deep water men are scarce. Mr. Sullivan read about you in Palmer's book. It wasn't hard to track you down. Why does he need deep water, men? The wreck lies in 200 feet of water. I'll say you need a couple of deep drips. <laughs> if the wreck's in 200 feet of water, she's no menace to navigation, not unless this guy Sullivan uses a submarine. What was her name? I'm sorry, I can't tell you that. It's simply a wreck Mr. Sullivan once blown up. I'm to offer you $5,000 down if you take the job. And 5,000 more when you complete it. Ten grand. What do you think, Pete? Well, I'd do anything for you, gorgeous. Any time, any place. Then you'll take the job? Uh-huh. You're offering plenty of bucks, but they wouldn't do us any good. Not in the penitentiary. I never go into deals unless I know all the answers beforehand. Maybe it's my Navy training, but I like everything open and above board. Sorry, honey. Gunner's top man in the outfit. Why don't you lay it on the line? He's not so tough. I'm sorry, I can't. I thought... Oh, well, it doesn't matter. Would anyone like to help a little gal find cover before dark? Why, honey, you're looking at the official guide and one-man escort bureau of Rocky Beach. I'll borrow a gun at Jalopy. We'll set a course for the Peacock Inn. Music, dancing, maybe a little moonlight. How's about it? Why not? Gus. Right. I didn't pay much attention to her dating Pete. 
Not just then, but I had plenty of cause to remember it the following morning when... Okay, okay! We've been robbed. Where's Pete? I give you three guesses. What do you mean we've been robbed? Somebody made off with Pete's diving gear and our spare compressor. You got any idea who'd swipe that stuff? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Here's something the clerk told me to give you. What's up, Gunner? We're flying down to Padre Harbor. We'll hire a diving crew there. Wreck is off Barracuda Point. Be back shortly dripping with money. Love and kisses, Pete. P.S. May come back with a hunk of gold braid on my arm. She got him. Yeah, hook, line, and diving gear. I was sore at Pete and I was sore at Dames. Then I got sore at myself. I should have ridden Budinsky on that party. I stewed about it a while and decided to send Swede down by plane to kind of keep an eye on things. Remember what I told you, Swede? I'll check on the ships that have been sunk off Barracuda Point. You keep an eye on that blonde and Pete. I'll be down as soon as I can make it. You know something, Gunner? Sometimes I think you'd have made a wonderful mother. Yeah, both of us. Maybe you're right. Don't worry about that boy. I'll take good care of him. So long. I wanted to find out the name of the wreck off Barracuda Point. She was a sea hornet, carried army supplies and a million in gold consigned to the Australian government. You don't dive on wrecks unless you first make your deal with the insurance boys who own them, and Sullivan hadn't made a deal. Maybe he had already salvaged the gold and wanted to blow up the wreck to cover his tracks. But just in case, I made a deal myself. Your credentials are in order, Mr. McNeil. We'll be glad to authorize you to salvage the gold in the Sea Hornet for, say, 25%. 200 feet's pretty deep, Mr. Goodrich. That yellow stuff's no good to you where it is. 75%. 50%. And that's the best I can do. The Sea Hornet was one of the first on our list. That's a deal. You mail the authorization to the Little Point Hotel in Rocky Beach. I had to hire me a diver to finish up our contract on the Princess. Hi, Gunner. Come for that recompressor? Not yet. It'll save a lot of lives. We want to keep seeing you around. You forgot to add it cost 5,000 bucks. What's 5,000 bucks? You tell me. I want to hire me a diver. Easy job, 60 feet. You and Pete breaking up? No, Pete's on another job. We suddenly branched out. Got a good man, Navy trained? Hi, Rocky. Come here. Rocky Lowe. Say, he was at Pearl. Maybe you know him. Yeah. I knew Rocky Lowe. I would caught him cutting into the paymaster's safe aboard the Oklahoma with an underwater torch. Navy had given him five years for what he had in mind. Rocky, you know Gunner McNeil? Sure. Small world, ain't it, Gunner? Sometimes I think it's too small. Sorry, can't use you, Rocky. The war's over. I can still remember. We fell out over that uh, Oklahoma dame at Pearl. We wouldn't want to work together, would we? Yeah, and some dirty rat squealed on me. What'd you expect me to do? Give me the Congressional Medal? Very funny. Very funny. Hey, fight! Come on! Get me 
the police, quick. You all right? Yeah. What other divers you got in stock? Bob Harris. He's not Navy trained, but he's a good man. Okay, have him bring his gear and be on the job in the morning. I'll furnish the tender. Beat it out the back way. The cops are here. What do I care about the cops? so long. Fight's over. The customers have all gone home. All right. That's the way you want it. I'll have to have something for my report. Tom, I'll give you something. I'm in a hurry. We were coming in the next evening. I'd finished breaking in the new diver and I was taking the plane for Padre Harbor the following day. Long distance has been trying to get you for an hour, Gunner. Uh, call uh, operator 29. Thanks, Bob. Pete, he's got the money. I got 20 bucks that says Pete's got the money. What aren't you offering? Oh, five to one. Uh-uh. My mother taught me not to bet against sure things. No guts. Tell you what I'll do, fellas. I'll make it easy. Ten to one. I think mother would go for this. I'll take care for that. I'll take the same. The gunner's all through, fellas. Come on and get your bad news. Come on, gunner. Tell us what goes. Hey, what's up? Pete died in the bottom, Sully. I'd have enjoyed that trip down south if my mind hadn't been filled with what had happened to Pete. When I arrived, I wanted straight answers to a lot of questions. I was thinking about a dame. Oh, sweet. Hi. City morgue. Let's have it from the beginning, sweet. Well, when I lived here, I checked in at the Harbor Hotel. And I called Sullivan's joint. It was late that night before I could find out anything. But what I did find out was that Pete and Sullivan and the crew were already at Barracuda Point. What about the Radford team? She's the one I talked to at the Padre Inn. Next morning, I skipped out to Pelican Bay and I took a speedboat over to the Reverie. That's the boat they were using for a diving barge off Barracuda Point. Sullivan and his crew, a couple of guys named Connor and Bone. They were already pulling feet up when I came aboard. Suffocated. Sullivan said Pete had got his lines pinched in the wreck below, and before they could do anything about it, it was too late. What kind of a guy is this Sullivan? Oh, he's about your size, Gunner. He dresses kind of flashy. He seemed like a right nice sort of a guy. Did he give over the name of the wreck he wanted blown up? No, he didn't.
That's the way they look when it's death from suffocation or poison. The medics call it Rhesus sardonicus, the grin of death. How do the coroner's report read? Um, it's right here, sir. Death from suffocation during diving operations from the work boat Reverie off Spanish Rock. Spanish Rock? Who gave you these details? Mr. Anthony Sullivan. I'll let you know about, uh, about the funeral arrangements later. There's no hurry, sir. Pete's face was still before my eyes. His note said the wreck was off Barracuda Point. The report said Spanish Rock, 20 miles away. Maybe Pete's lines got pinched. Maybe he'd found out something below he wasn't supposed to. Sullivan had simply stopped the air pump. Looked like quite a shack. A high-toned, expensive type. I figured I'd be lucky to get out with my shirt. will be $35 a day, sir. Very reasonable. Uh, boy, show Mr. McNeil, Gunner McNeil, to 357, please. Just put my gear in my room, kid. Tell Miss Sandra Radford I'll meet her in the drinking joint. The cocktail lounge. Yes, Mr. McNeil. She wasn't the dame I was gunning for. Hello. So our tough guy finally changed his mind after all. Cigarette? Light? Is anything wrong? What makes you think there's something wrong? I don't know. It's just the way you look. Like an admiral who's seen a spot of grease on his quarterdeck. Does Pete know you're here? Or is this a surprise? Pete's tied up in Padre Harbor. Would you like to run down to see him? Fine. We could all have dinner together. Yeah, we could all have dinner together. Let's have a little talk. Something's wrong. You're acting so funny. I'm a funny guy. I didn't know the waves went to Annapolis. Oh, Johnny gave it to me. Husband or boyfriend? Johnny's my brother. 
He graduates next year. Well, that takes care of Johnny. Let's get back to Pete. How'd you snake him down here? Pete wouldn't go for just an armful of moonlight. I don't think that's very nice. I don't feel very nice. I'll call my shots. Pete's my buddy. When he gets tangled up with a dame, I want to see that he gets a square deal. I see what you mean. Pete asked me to marry him. What'd you do, give him the old razzle-dazzle? I don't think I quite get the double talk. I'll make it plain. Pete died on the bottom yesterday morning. His body's on a slab at Padre Harbor. Oh, no. What happened? Goes something like this. Beautiful woman wants something. She doesn't care who gets killed just so she gets it. She promises a guy a honeymoon and all the fancy trimmings. So now he's dead. Something going on that I ought to know about? Tony, this is Gunnar McNeil, Pete's partner. He was telling me that... I was telling her what happened to Pete. You shouldn't have shocked her like that. Any dame that'll go behind my back and lure my buddy to his death can stand plenty of shock. Suntan was strictly on the up and up. But I know how you feel. Pete was a nice fellow. Buy your drink. I'll take my usual, Henri. And I think you need a small brandy. Yes, sir. There was a P.S. in that note Pete left for me. It said, don't be surprised if I come home with a hunk of gold braid tucked under my arm. That's funny. I wonder what he meant. I wouldn't know. Do you see this look in my eyes? Do you know what it means? It means I'm afraid of you. the need of a new diver. I didn't want to scare him off. It wouldn't be smart. Satisfied? I've got a one-track mind. I don't accept explanations too quickly. Divers don't check out like Pete did very often. Diving's a dangerous fitness. They tell me. Diving and dames. Friendly joint. Everybody knows everybody. When I see something interesting, I find out about it. Thought it was usually the other way around. My name's Ginger. You sing a pretty hot number. That's the way I'm usually remembered, Mr. McNeil. Well, now that we're old pals, Gunner to you. Where do we park? <laughs>
There's an enchanted trysting arbor in the moonlight, soft and dreamy, full of mystery and magic. Where a man's fancy knows no chain. Like it? Yeah, it's quite a companion. Why did they call you Gunner? Well, the Navy hung it on me. They used to make music with a 40 millimeter gun. Is that big? One of the shells hit you. The boys would have nothing left to remember. <laughs> I like to be remembered. Do you like the little blonde? She's got a face and a body. What's your setup with Sullivan? Posted. Interested? Not anymore. Nice. What do you do for a living outside of giving me butterflies? I work in the salvage business. Going to be around long? Why? Just thought you might get lonely. You ask a lot of questions. I always ask questions. That's how I get to know a lot of nice people. Oh. That would have to happen. It's the cue for my next number. I finish at 10. I could be back here a few minutes later. What about tomorrow night? Small loan till tomorrow night. Pelican Bay was a sleepy little village. I was looking for a boat called the Reverie. I figured I'd find out about it ashore someplace. Doesn't mean a thing. <laughs> Excuse me. Have a snort, mister. Uh, McNeil's the name. Don't mind if I do. If you're looking for George, he ain't available. I got him planted out back, rest his soul. You staying at the inn, Mr. McNeil? Yeah. Poor George. We worked in a nice little pub off the fish market in Billingsgate. It was so romantic. And then George got caught short. With his accounts, I mean. He almost got sent up to Wormwood Scrubs. Ah, dear So, we sold everything and came over here. We had $700 and George put four of it into... Seems like we never could get away from the smell of fish. Yeah, well, I'll talk to you about George later, Gorgeous. Right now, I... Oh, well, we were getting along fine until George stepped on a loose board and broke his appendicitis. I've been telling him for a week to nail down that loose... Yeah, that's too bad, Mrs. Drinkwater, but I'm looking for a boat called the Reverie. Oh, the Reverie. It's run by a fella named Sproul. He's been trying to move in here ever since I lost poor George. It does get kind of lonesome around here without a man, though. But not that lonesome. Sproul's aboard, all right. <laughs> He's a crazy screwball. He plays the accordion half the night. That ain't so bad. But when he starts singing, it's plain murder. <laughs> you can use my dory if you like, Mr. McNeil. It's the white one tied up to the float out there. Well, thanks. I look good in white. <laughs> <laughs> you can use it any time you want to. Have another snort. Oh, no. Thanks just the same. And if I were you, Gorgeous, I wouldn't get this stuff too close to an open flame. <laughs> <laughs> it does make you tiddly, don't it? Poor George was always tiddly. I remember the time he took me punting out at Richmond. Yeah, well, we'll talk about it again sometime. Oh, but it was such a beautiful place. And we had lunch along, and George had on a new pair of white flannels, but he got stuck on the end of a pole. There I was alone, and the punt, and there was George slowly dropping into the... Goodbye, Mr. McNeil. Long <laughs> blow the man down.
There were only two boats in the bay, a cabin cruiser and a work boat I figured could be the reverie. You, what do you want? McNeil's the name. Pete Hunter's partner. Oh, Pete's partner. Well, Pete was a good guy. It was unfortunate. Were you aboard when it happened? Yes, I was tending the compressor. The weather was fine. Everything was fine. How his air hose got tangled, I'll never know. I want to check his equipment. You got a light? There's one down below. You have to play that thing? <laughs> yeah. Maybe sometime it'll get me into the movies. Right? No. She's a charter boat, mostly fishing parties. I'm afraid she's too rich for my blood. You charter? How much? Fifty dollars a day in grub. You're hired. Swede's my tender. Oh, you know him. He'll be aboard first thing in the morning. See you then. Sure thing, Mr. McNeil. Now, it's all the same to you leave that ever-loving squeegee ashore. If I was going to do any diving, I meant to be boss man. I'd investigate that wreck on my own and try to find out what happened to Pete. What were you fellas trying to do? Sorry, Bob, we didn't see you. That dory's pretty hard to spot in the moonlight. Maybe you should have running lights, mister. Yeah. Well, just in case there wasn't an accident. <laughs> Maybe we could accidentally run into each other again sometime. And don't forget you owe Mrs. Drinkwater a dory. George died, rest his soul. Why, Mr. McNeil, what on earth happened? Well, those two buzzers from the tarpon must have thought I was a duck. 
They ran me down and smashed your dory. But don't you worry, gorgeous. I'll make them buy you another one. Oh, I'm not worried about the dory, Mr. McNeil. It's you. Why, you'll catch your death of cold. Here, let me take your things. I'll Thanks, dry them I'm for used you. to it. Thank you. Oh, it's no trouble at all. I'd be glad to. Poor George was always all wet. Like the time I was telling you about when he fell into the Thames. Well, when he got back into the putt, I made him take off all his things. And then I made him lie down on the bottom of the putt while I dried him. And it was a good job I did of it, too. Because George always had trouble with his lungs. And it wasn't his lungs that got him. No, it was that loose board over there like I was telling you. Oh, well, look, thanks, gorgeous. But I, I'm in a hurry. I'll, I'll take a rain check on the, on the drying out party. Be a good girl. your horrible disposition. Worse. I came back from my bath, which is more than Pete did. I had some company, two characters called Bone and Condor. I don't get it. That's quite a story. Stop me if you've heard it. I was rowing a dory back to the float. As Bone and Condor left the tarpon in a power boat. I saw they were heading right for me, so I went over the side. They went right through the boat. <gasps> Sorry. So I swam back to the float and tossed them in a drink. Friends of yours, aren't they? They work for me. I wouldn't exactly call them friends of mine. I'm glad to hear it, because I don't think it was an accident. Meaning? The track mind is thinking overtime. Sometimes thinking too much loses friends. Might even get to like each other. Tony, he was just wet and mad. He didn't mean anything. Let me do the morning. Good evening, Mrs. McNeil. I want a car for 7.30 in the morning to take me to Padre Harbor. I'm sorry, Mr. McNeil. All the inn's transportation is reserved. However, it's just a short walk to the highway. Maybe you can flag a bus. Thanks for the cooperation. Neil speaking. Hello, Gunner. I hear you want to go to town in the morning. Things do get around. You got a hidden mic in the clerk's desk? I'm leaving at 7.30. Ooh, <laughs> that's a little early. But Barms is having a sale on some new Tahitian swim suits. So you want to sit in my lap in case there's only one seat in the bus? <laughs> Might be fun, but I've got a car. What's your contribution? I'll buy the swimsuit. You're a nice gunner. See you in the morning. Good night. Maybe Ginger, good scout. Maybe she had orders to keep tabs on me. Maybe. Where are you from? Or are you the mysterious type? Rocky Beach at the moment. Got a lot of girls there? None I can remember. Why did you come down here? Came down to see a friend. He's in the morgue. In the morgue? Yeah. Oh, Gunner, I'm sorry. Is there anything I can do? Just keep on being beautiful. Hi! But Neil, your man Swede phone. Wants to see you at the Harbor Hotel right away. Says it's important. I was going to stop in anyway. Thanks. Now I suppose I drop you off at the Harbor Hotel. That's right, baby. Anything wrong? I was just wondering why Sullivan had gone out of his way to bring me a message. Maybe he was going into town anyway. Maybe. Disappointed you can't check on the swimsuit sale? I'll take your word for it, baby. You better get down there before they're all sold out. Thanks for the ride. Thanks for the contribution. 
My business may take some time, you know. Maybe I like waiting for you. Okay. Meet your farm. I'd had in mind going to the police station first thing, but now that was moved down to second place. Swede had said it was important, and that rated top priority in my book. Open up. about time you got around to me. Nice joint. Nice friends. Where'd you find them? Fine. They found me. Busted in my room before dawn and jumped me when I was asleep. They said they'd get rid of me as soon as they took care of you. Wait till I get my hands on them swabs. You may get a chance at that. I tangled with those two guys last night in Pelican Bay. Well, what are we... we... Untie me! I brought Sweet up to date on things, and I told him to take our gear to Pelican Bay aboard the Reverie and to pick me up at the float at 7.30 the next morning. Then I headed for it. Is there any special reason why you want to see a report of this autopsy? When a diver kicks off on the bottom, we'd like to know how it happened. Might save some lives later on. Okay, come back in a couple hours. I'll have a report for you. Thanks, Lieutenant. I walked around town a while. I had time to kill, and I hoped I'd run into Ginger. But I ran into something else. Hello. I suppose you're just in town for the shopping, too. Why, no. Tony drove me to meet Johnny. He wired he had a week's sleep. Johnny wasn't on the plane. Tony's calling the end now to see if there's another message. You've got an answer for everything, beautiful. Everything except what happened to Pete. Sweet, all right, McNeil? Sure, Sweet's all ship shape. One of your friends doesn't feel too good, though. He accidentally dove out a window of the Harbor Hotel. He forgot it was closed. There's his cap. Those guys had me lots of laughs. Yeah, they're a riot. She tells me you brought her in town to meet her brother. Yeah, that's right. His leave must have gone haywire. Pardon. was working. When I come up, maybe I'll be able to tell you why they did it. Maybe that'll tell you who did it. Where are you staying? Padre Inn. I'll work with you, McNeil, but you gotta come up with something I can get my teeth into. I can't act on suspicion. You understand that. Thanks, Lieutenant. That's fair enough. Get your swimsuit? <laughs> what there was of it. Here's your change. Thanks. Anything on your mind beside me, Gunner? You wouldn't want me to say yes, would you? You see what I see? Want a lift? Yes, sir. Hop aboard. Going to the inn? Yes, sir. Sure nice of you folks to pick me up. It was an unexpected pleasure. Your name Radford? That's right. <laughs> what a coincidence. How did you know, Gunner? Ran into your sister in town. She was expecting it. 
Well, I missed my plane, but I caught a hop on an Navy C-54. I guess you'd be glad to see it. Yes, sir. Now, well, that was strike one for suntan. Kid brother routine had been on the level. I was trying to figure things out when all of a sudden Johnny asked if we'd mind stopping. down with the ship out there. Oh, that's tough. What did he serve on? Well, the Navy offered him a desk job, but he worked a transfer to the Merchant Marine. His ship was torpedoed right out there. I knew I'd stumbled onto something important, something that might tell the why for Pete's death and the two attempts on my life. Well, thanks for the lift, sir. You're welcome. We've got a date tonight, or had you forgotten? I haven't forgotten. Same place? At 10? I'll be there. Three fifty-seven. Yes, Mr. McNeil. Well, how's that one-track mine coming along? That seems to worry you. <laughs> worry is the wrong word. I'm just curious to know if you're staying or checking out. I'm staying. Got a nice place here. I enjoy the swimming. <laughs> Promise me one thing, that you won't tell Johnny what you find down there. What's Johnny got to do with this? It was my dad's ship. He was drunk from the time he left San Francisco. He tore a bottom out on the shoals off Barracuda Point. Says who? Tony. He was first officer. He reported the ship torpedoed to protect dad. The name of the ship, the Sea Hornet? Yes. Why didn't you say so before? Tony made me promise not to. What made him suddenly decide to blow her up? Because he discovered the insurance people intended to salvage her. So he was going to blow it up to cover for your dad, huh? That's right. Bilgewater. But it's true. Tony's only doing it to protect Johnny and me from the disgrace of... Did Tony also tell you that the Sea Hornet carried a fortune in gold, a million bucks worth? Or did he forget to mention that little item? Look, baby, there's something phony about you, Sullivan, and the whole deal. And I'm going to break it wide open. In the first place, if the Sea Hornet ran afoul of the Barracuda Shoals, there'd have been no explosion. 
And if Tony had reported her torpedoed, some of the officers or men would have questioned it at the investigation. Pete saw something down there in the bottom he wasn't supposed to see, so he was killed. Well, I'm going to find out what it was. And when I do, somebody's going to fry in a hot seat. Wait, please. I didn't know anything. Sorry, I've got a date. I'm already late for it. You Rocky Lowe? That's me. I'm Sullivan. That's Mr. Condor. Glad to know you. Glad to know you. Got your baggies checks? Yeah. Brush your stuff right down to Pelican Bay. Here's a setup, Rocky. I want this job done fast. One dive, set your charges, and then blow. And I pay my money right on the line. Think you remember me? Till tomorrow night. I wish you were going to stay a while. Maybe I will. Mon petit chou. Like it. Could make a guy forget things. You're going to be nice to have around. private room and bath. You don't seem to use it much. We've been waiting here for hours. Why the night watch? I've told Johnny everything. What you told Suntan makes sense, Gunner. There's something Tony wants to cover up. He's in too big a hurry to blow up the Hornet. Hey. He flew in a diver last night. His name is Rocky Lowe. There's nothing that guy wouldn't do for money. Why are you telling me all this? Because we're all in this together. Meaning you're on the level? I always was. Sometimes you make that tough for me to believe. Like your tie-in with Sullivan. What's the answer to that one? Well, it's simple. When I got out of the Navy, I came to see Tony. To talk about Dad. He offered me a job. He didn't tell me until last week that the Hornet wasn't torpedoed. It was only after he found out that the insurance people intended to salvage her that he decided to blow her up. That's why he sent me to get a diver. And it had to be Pete. Could have been both of you. When I hit that wreck, I should be pretty tough on you in Suntan. Well, you lost a sidekick, Gunner. We... We lost a father. We'll take our chances. One more question, Goldbraid. It's a little personal, and Johnny's not going to like it. But I've got to know the answer. Are you Tony's girl? 
You're way off course, sailor. It's top secret, but I found out that Tony's married. To Ginger. To Ginger? Mm-hmm. It seems they work at it only at her convenience. <laughs> okay, get going. We've got to step on it before Rocky blows the wreck. I'll meet you in your car. I'll go a long way to put over a double cross, Mrs. Sullivan. You figured I'd sleep till noon, by which time the Hornet would be blown up. The next time you use knockout drops, use enough. What do you think I am? I'm trying to remember the right name. I don't like playing sucker, even for you and Sullivan. You're making it easy for me. It's neat. I find you here, my wife, protecting herself. There's no murder charge for protecting my home. It's perfect. Turn her loose, McNeil. Sure. moored over the wreck and they got a diver down. Yeah, Rocky Low. Oh, Swede, this suntan's brother, Johnny. Hi. Hi, Swede. Think I've been cutting up any? He thinks he's got engine trouble. He couldn't have picked a better time. Let's see if we can help him out. Understand you're having engine trouble. The distributor head's broken. The distributor head's gone. It's broken. Where is it? It's broken. I threw it overboard. Search the boat. Who paid you to do this? Sullivan. Get off this boat. <laughs> Here's your other weapon, Squeegee. Nice launching, Gunner. Get the anchor up, Johnny. Here it is. We take the wheel. Yeah. Trying to get, Mr. Sproul. McNeil stole my boat. I'll fix him if it's the last thing I do.
Starboard gunner. I should have hit that guy harder. Coast Guard, calling Coast Guard, workboat Reverie, calling Coast Guard. Calling Coast Guard, Reverie, calling Coast Guard, emergency. This is Coast Guard Radio. This is Coast Guard Radio. Go ahead, Reverie. Go ahead, Reverie. Oh, Coast Guard, this is McNeil aboard the Reverie, anchored three miles northeast of Barracuda Point. Radio Lieutenant Drake, Police Department, Padre Harbor. Tell him I'll have some customers for him. I'm diving on the Sea Hornet to get evidence. They got her mined and she goes up in 60 minutes. Send a cutter out here fast to the recompression tank. I'm going down 200 feet. If it isn't here when I come up, I'm dead. 
Roger your message. Wilco. Check my gear, Johnny. Right. Got her. You can't do it. Look what happened to Rocky. Nothing you could find would be worth the risk. You really mean that, don't you? It's been nice knowing you, beautiful. Nice to know you're worrying about me. I've got to square things for Pete. Maybe I'll find the proof I need down below. Get me dressed. Step on it. I'll take the light torch and igniter down with me. sunshine and blue water. Maybe they'd bring the recompression tank in time. Maybe. Gave me a strange feeling wearing the same gear that Pete died in. Maybe somewhere in the bottom I'd find the reason why.
igniter. Igniter on. was working at the ball. Sullivan let him have it through the back of the head and locked him inside. Who killed Pete Hunter? Sullivan. Pete talked over the transmitter and tipped us off. He was wise to something below. Sullivan shut off his air compressor. Gunner! Gunner! Condor's confessed! Swell. How about that Coast Guard There she is! Hey, look! There she is! Gunner! Gunner! Take it easy. Cutter's inside and she's coming up fast. That's well, Lieutenant. All in my slack. I've blown myself topside. on deck. 
Boone had set the charges in number two hole, and just before eight bells she blew. Then the alarm sounded, and Sullivan shouted over the intercom, abandoned ship, we've been torpedoed. Well, how'd you get away with the gold? Well, Sullivan, Boone, and me waited till the rest of the crew had gotten clear in the other lifeboats. Then we stowed it in number six boat, and in the darkness, pulled away from the Hornet a few minutes before she sank. Sullivan's got the gold stashed in the freezing plant over at the inn. It's frozen, all right. You can't pass gold today without the law asking a lot of questions. Yes, sir. Gunner will be glad to hear that, sir. It'll come under a salvage contract. I'll get off light for talking, won't I, Commander? That's up to the court. All right. Yes, sir. Let's go. So ended Operation Barracuda. Gold Braid and I had lost plenty, but now we had each other. And that was how it was going to be. I'll say now.